Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumuyi. Thank you, sir. Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. The overseers have not decided where to have the convention next year, but I'm just wondering what it will be next year. This is the climax of it all. Praise the Lord. And for those of you who are here joining us for the first time tonight, you are in a good place. And if you are living around here in the Twin Cities, we want to invite you back. After the convention, the revival still continues. And God is solving problems here. When you come in, your problems are solved. Yeah. I learned in a particular church location uh, back in Nigeria. Somebody was, uh, at that time he wasn't a member of Deeper Life and he got himself into trouble a lot of times. And every time he got into trouble, there was just one place he'll go. He'll go to a Deeper Life Bible Church location, even when there was no service. Then he'll kneel down there and say, God, I got into trouble. God of Deeper Life, you are here get me out and he always got out i said he always got out even when there was no service and now tonight there is service he'll get you out but you said i got myself into that problem all the same he'll get you out and anytime you get into trouble coming here the lord is saying his power is saying and it will solve your problem. Now, uh, brother, that's um, Pastor Thompson, Adiremi, and you know, he's from Dallas. And you know, when you get to Dallas, visit the church there, something good is happening there. Yeah. And um, he said, God restored Daniel, and Daniel dissolves doubts. Whatever problem you have tonight, the Lord will dissolve everything. Yeah. We're going, to, we're going to do a number of things tonight. We'll teach, we'll preach, we'll pray, we'll have revival, we'll have whatever it is we need, we'll have everything together. Yeah. Praise the Lord. We'll close our eyes as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you very much tonight. We bless your name for our leaders, for our ministers, for all our workers and all these singers and technicians and everybody. Oh Lord, we pray as they are blessing us, Bless them in Jesus' name. I will pray for all our members, all our invitees, all our guests, and everyone. We pray that tonight a refreshing will come from heaven. You open our eyes to see, our minds to understand. And Lord, we pray every miracle you need, you give to everyone in Jesus' name. We pray that here tonight, doubts are resolved. Sicknesses are healed. Attacks are canceled. Problems are taken away. And then you enlighten us in your word in Jesus' name. Bless your people tonight, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. Uh, turn to the person by your side and say something good is coming your way. It's come already. Praise the Lord. We can sit down. Thank you. Tonight we're talking about something very important. And sometimes you see when you mention something is small, something is little, you think it's not very important. But you see, it's the little, little things that actually count. If you see the problem that the people that have problems, it's the little, little things that brought them into those problems. And if you see the people that actually have made some great things, achievements in life, is the little, little things they did that actually brought them to the place where they got to. And tonight we're talking about some three things. I'll join number four later. I normally have point one, point two, point three. I'll give you the regular three and then later I'll climax it with number four. Number one is little foxes little foxes what does that mean what could that be and what could that do in your life or in my life in our families and our communities little foxes number two little folly little folly what will that mean and what could that interpret or translate to in your life in your ministry in your family number three little fire you'll find it's f f and f 
the foxes, the folly, and then the fire. The first F I'll be looking at will be face, little face. But the major thing, number one, we're looking at little foxes. So, Songs of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 15. Songs of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 15. Take us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines. For vines have tender grapes. It says, take us the foxes. That is, take away the foxes. What kind of foxes? The little foxes. Can I ask you a question? How many people do you think in this world have been killed by lions? If you just think about it, and think about uh, back, way back in Africa, and think about these fierce lions, these terrible lions, and you've heard that maybe they killed this, this, and that, I'll guess that there are not too many people that have been killed by lions. I'm going to ask you another question. How many people have been killed by mosquitoes? Those little, little, insignificant insects. And many of the missionaries that went to Africa many years ago, and they had malaria caused by mosquitoes. Many of them lost their lives. How many of those missionaries died because of lions? Not too many. Just the little, little insects. And sometimes, so you have just a little fox, and you say, this is small. That's a problem. We're talking about sometimes when people die. And we, once in a while, we hear about this plane crash. And we say, this is terrible. I'm asking you now, when you think about the people that have died of plane crashes, and you think of people who have died on just riding motorcycle. Not that little thing compared with aeroplane. If you go to check up, you might find that more people have lost their lives on motorbike than riding aeroplane. It's the little, little, little things that kill, that destroy. That's why here the man of God said, I've learned a lesson in life. That it's not the big things that destroy people, just the little things. And it says, because of this, here is my prayer. You see the great things to have during this convention here. So it's not a big thing that will maybe cancel those things. As you look at your Bible, and you find, uh, and we're, we might be able to look at some of them. The people that lost their lives, and they lost their relationship with, and lost everything. Just because of some little, little things. And then they are not able to continue. You will continue. That's why the man of God here said, Oh Lord, this is my prayer. Take us, take away the foxes from us. The little foxes that spoil the vines. For our vines have tender grapes. Number two is the little folly. In Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Verse 1. Dead Flies cause the ointment of the apothecary to stand forth sinking seven. So does a little folly. A little folly. That is a little bit of foolishness. You know some people say, I can tolerate this. I can manage this. I can go along with this. After all, this is a little sin. You will not know in the nations, various nations, how some little comments will spark up a kind of conflict, national, international conflict, that maybe somebody made carelessly against another nation. And because of that little statement and that little folly, then you have a kind of combat battle between nations. We run to the New Testament. Now this is James chapter 3. In James chapter 3, we're looking at verse 5. James 3 verse 5. Even so is the tongue a little member. Even so is the tongue a little member. And boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter 
a little fire kindles. How great a matter, a little fire kindles. That one I understand. I'm, I'm sure you understand that one. You know, sometimes in the States, say you read about vast areas of land, totally devastated, burnt up. And then you hear that, you know, it's just expanding and expanding. And you're asking yourself, how did that all start? Just a little fire kindled, and then it spreads everywhere and destroys the work that some people have done for tens of years, many years, many decades. And that's the reason why you're, you're thinking about these little, little things. And if you're in the habit of saying, it doesn't matter. This one doesn't matter. It has a little thing. This will not kill anybody. Those are the things that kill. Those are the things that destroy. That's the reason why you want to take care of those little, little, little things. I'm dividing the message to three parts. Mainly, number one, the description and protection from little foxes. First is the description of little foxes and then we're going to look at the flip side, the other side of it, which is protection from little foxes. Number two, the defilement of little folly. And then we look at the other side, the purging from little folly. That means that you combine the two together, you have the defilement and the purging from little folly. Number three, the danger of little fire and then the prevention of that little fire. The danger and the prevention of little fire. We come to number one. Number one is the description of little foxes. The description of little foxes. Let's come back to Sons of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 15. Take us the foxes. Take away from us the foxes. You'll see that the word us here collect, is a collective word. It's saying, this is not just my problem. Solomon, the wisest man on earth, said, I cannot sleep at night with a fox in my bedroom. Therefore, for me and for my family, take the little fox away. And with his wisdom, this is something he couldn't deal with himself. And it's appealing to the God of heaven. That means then, this is not just a kind of fox which is like an animal. It's illustrative, it's figurative it's talking about another thing and he's saying this is like a fox and this is like a little fox and saying oh God, the God of heaven we're appealing to you in our family here in the palace you take the foxes away from us and then he's talking about the nation he's saying look at this beautiful nation, a great nation you have made me a king, that's how Solomon is talking and he's saying but there's something that can destroy Destroy this nation. You know, his son did not pray like he prayed. That he is, uh, you know, when Solomon died, his son then came to reign. But you tell when Solomon was reigning, he had some real principles and practices of building the temple, the sanctuary, and building his own house, and then he put taxes on the people, but he had the wisdom to do it. And he said, oh Lord, all this I'm planning, I'm having this and this, and it was hard on the people, but he had prayed. He said, take the foxes, the little foxes away from us. His son took over when he died. When he died, the son took over, and then the people came to the son, they said, lighting this body. It's quite heavy on us. And uh, so he said, all right, go away. I'll get back to you. Then he called the young people around him. He said, the people said I should lighten the body. What should I do? He called the elderly ones. And the elderly ones said, you know what? Be a servant leader. And just listen to the people. Don't take all the decisions by yourself. If you will do this and then Bend a little to them and give them some good, nice words. The kingdom will remain. He said, I've heard you. Then he went to the younger people and said, young people, what do you think? These people came and he said, lighten the body. Tell them that your thumb 
will be greater than the waste of your father. That even though you are young, you are going to be tough on them. And then they came back the third day and they said, what do you say? Remember, this is just a little, it didn't take him five minutes to say that, just a little fox, just a little word. He said, now you want your load to be lighter, your body to be lighter. I'm going to tell you that you didn't see any trouble during the time of my father. I'm going to lay it on you heavy. So they said, to your houses, O Israel, that little word broke the whole nation. That's the little fox. Take it away from us. Some little, little things we say. Some little, little things we do that will just break. The nation that David built up and the nation that Solomon built up. You have two generations. And now this young man taking over that nation, just a little word he said, everything broke up. That's the reason why we're praying that in your family, the little, little things that drive the children away from the family. Those little, little things. We don't spank them here. And we don't take uh, something that will hurt them and beat them. No, but just the little things we say. And I'm praying for your family. These little, little foxes, God will take away. Amen. And sometimes you go to school. It's not the big, big things that make them drive us out. And they say you can't be in this school again. It's just being late for about five minutes and not doing our son. Just little, little things we could have taken care of. And we didn't take care of. And they say, wait, this one does not have any future. It's not thinking about the future. Just because of those little, little things. When you go for interview, it's not that you don't have the knowledge. It's just, you know, the careless dressing, the carefree attitude. It's the little, little things that disqualify us. That's why we're saying, well, the great revival that is happening here now, because I know you have a revival already. The little, little things we need to get rid of, I pray the Lord will do it in our lives. Now, the foxes, I told you, it's a, a kind of figurative statement, the foxes, that word. What does that mean? Ezekiel chapter 13. Ezekiel 13. I'm reading from verse 4. Ezekiel 13. Verse 4. O Israel, thy prophets are like the foxes in the desert. Thy prophets are like the foxes in the desert. Now you understand when you think about Israel. Israel had number one kings. Number two, Israel had priests. Number three, Israel had prophets. Kings, priests, prophets. And to go a long way, you know, my style of making you to remember things, the prince, the priest, and the prophet. Now, when you think about those three, what do you think really happened in Israel? The prophets eventually, they became foxes. That he is destroyers. And that's why Ezekiel here says, O oh Israel. He looked at Israel. And he looked at the generations of covenant promises given unto Israel. That I'll make you this, I'll make you this. God literally said, I'll make you the number one nation in the whole world. There'll be no nation like you. And then the prophets were rising up. And Ezekiel looked at the devastation, destruction, the evil in the land. And he said, what has come on Israel? Why is it, number one, came to the last position? Why is it the people who are head and they're supposed to be head, they are now tail? He said, now I see. Israel, you know what has destroyed you? Your prophets are like the foxes. And they're just the little, little foxes. Some things that, you know, preachers do, pastors do, and prophets say. Some of those things that will kind of destroy the whole thing. You know, this, uh, every time I've been here in the sessions, uh, this uh, weekend, when I listen to, you know, our pastors, and I've traveled to many places. I've, you know, traveled to uh, many churches because I'm invited, not just by deeper life, Pentecostal churches, evangelical churches, even historic churches, orthodox churches in many countries. 